Hello, and welcome to Magic is Real, a podcast focused on the fascinating world of near-death experiences, spirit communication, and all things metaphysical and spiritual. The mission of this project is to share messages of hope and inspiration with others, and to spread the word that death is only an illusion. Thank you for being here with an open heart and mind. I wish you peace, light, and love always. Welcome to Magic is Real. I'm Shannon. I'm your host. And today I have with me Lily Nova. I'm so excited to have her here. You know that this, if you've been here before, that I often focus on near-death experiences, spiritually transformative experiences. And recently, if you have watched one of my most recent episodes, I had this epiphany in the middle of one of my interviews with Nikki Blair that I had been visited by multidimensional beings and seen UFOs. And suddenly it was like, it all just came together. And so now I've been deep diving into this topic of multidimensional beings, UFOs, aliens, all of this stuff. If you brought to me years ago, I would have said, you're crazy. I was not into it. I thought it was government stuff at you know, at best, and people who'd experienced it, I was like, they're probably nuts, or they're probably hallucinating. Um, But now I'm starting to see that spirituality and other dimensions and galaxies and beings are all part of the same system. So I have Lily Nova here to talk about this, because Lily Nova is an astrophotographer. She initiates contact with multidimensional beings, ETs, receives channeled messages from them. And I am so excited to bring her story to you today because it's fascinating. She's so grounded and normal and uh, speaks about all this stuff in a really, really grounded way. So Lily, thank you so much for being here. I'm so excited to deep dive with you about these topics. Hi, thank you for having me. I'm excited. It's my favorite topic right now. It's mine too. Uh, I'll start off by asking you, would you just kind of give us a little bit of background about who you are, what your past spiritual beliefs might have been, or beliefs about UFOs, ETs, all of this stuff, and what led you to this point of interest? Mm -hmm. So it, it really happened... The whole UFO thing, it happened very abruptly. I wasn't anticipating it. Um, I knew, I always knew that there was something else out there. I've always felt drawn to space and drawn to just, you know, what is life and death? You know, what else is out there? I've always kind of been interested in in those deep questions, but I didn't kind of, I didn't think too much of it. Um, I knew that there had to be something out there. I wasn't sure about the whole UFO thing. You know, I had seen ancient aliens like 10 years ago, and that kind of opened my mind a little bit to it. But that was the last thing on my radar, really. Um, I had had one spiritual experience, and I knew a little bit about the chakras, things like that, but very like novice, very, very beginner. It wasn't um, a big part of my life. So this happened very abruptly. Uh, Whenever COVID happened, I turned to the stars. I began shooting astrophotography, which is taking photos of the night sky. I could take pictures of galaxies, the Milky Way, and I just started spending every single night out there under the stars. I became amazed, fell in love with it. And as I began doing that, not too long after, I had my first really close UFO encounter right outside of my front door. I went out in the middle of the night, took a step on my front porch to get fresh air at about like one, one in the morning. And I suddenly saw a, a hovering craft above the neighborhood. I was like, okay, I ruled everything else out. That's not a star. That's not a craft, like a a plane. That's something else started recording it. As I did that, a second one appeared out of nowhere, a big triangular uh, ship, not triangle diamond did all these crazy maneuvers came right towards me and vanished above my head. So it was very like in your face. There was no doubt about that. And shortly after 
uh, I started seeing them left and right. So I just began documenting them with my camera. And as I began documenting them, I began learning about them. And it turned from being like a very physical experience to me learning that I can initiate contact with them. And they began sending me telepathic messages and visions of what these beings look like, sending me messages of why they're here, um, who we are, because our truth has been hidden. Like we are, we are just so like, <laughs> so, so behind on, on what really we are and what we're capable of. So that, um, and it also, they they took me down a spiritual journey. I wasn't expecting extraterrestrials to take me down a spiritual journey, but it got very spiritual very quick. And it's just been a very big blessing. Um, there's just so much love and so much, there's just so much out there. So it's a really exciting time. That was so eloquent, Lily. I loved, that's why I really wanted to have you on, especially because you said, you, it, this took you down this spiritual journey that you didn't expect. And I want to have a little dialogue as we talk and as I ask you questions. Uh, because like I said, I have found just interviewing near-death experiencers, just through through all of my experiences. I used to think that like UFOs and ETs, that was like one thing. And then, you know, spirit and all of that is another thing. And I had a strong interest in the spiritual world as I got older, and that actually kind of took me down this path. But it was when I saw, I watched um, Through the Wormhole and uh, whatever that, there was another documentary that I watched on outer space. And I was like, this only makes me more spiritual than less. A lot of people think science and spirituality are two different things. No. So I'd love to hear your take on, I'm going to ask you more specific questions about your experiences, but I would love to hear your take on how is it all related? How does it all connect? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's all connected. Um, these beings from other planets, they've evolved way past us, thousands upon thousands, possibly even millions of years. And they know that we are all one that's one of the biggest the first thing that they really taught me was that we are all one we are all connected through consciousness and i was actually studying the science of consciousness right before the ufo started showing up so we're all connected and then after i started seeing these ufos you begin opening up to the spiritual realm i began experiencing like my my father who passed came to visit me um so all of these other things started opening up and sometimes even with these these ufos and these star beings or extraterrestrials they behave very much like the spiritual paranormal world like um for example a you know a ghost can can sometimes it can be invisible it may show itself for a second it's in this other dimension and it can vanish it can communicate with your with you um, from another dimension, similar to these extraterrestrials. I have, I've had, um, I've actually taken a photo with my phone in, uh, in, in the basement. Just, uh, I got the nudge to take a picture. I took a picture. I, I felt them around me at all times, but I couldn't see them with my eyes open. Not all the time. Sometimes the camera catches them. On this photo, there's a being of light that was standing right in front of me. And it's extraterrestrial, it's galactic, but somehow it's 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 interdimensional, it's in another dimension. So our 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 eyesight is very limited. We only see about this much out of the visible spectrum. So there's all these things going on around us that we just have no idea. But as we evolve, our senses are beginning to open, our awareness is expanding. So then we're starting to be able to pick up on those things more easily and we'll begin to see more of those things also. Yeah, that's so interesting. Um, I'm a medium. And so I understand how I communicate telepathically with spirit. And you've said the same thing. That's how these beings communicate with you in visions. You see visions. You've also been able to channel information. How do you, Lily, 
know when they're with you and know that they're communicating with you? How do you perceive that? And how can you tell that they're there as opposed to this is my own thought? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's an interesting question. I feel like it, it takes a little bit of practice. Um, kind of sometimes it can be like super obvious, like some people get like voices in their head. Um, sometimes it can sound like your voice, but it's just a sudden idea or realization or wisdom, something that you would have known nothing about, just kind of like plops right on your head. Um, and your intuition is a really, really big part of it. But how I began to know whenever they were around is suddenly, sometimes my ears would ring because they're uh, higher vibrational and so their frequency is higher. So they may, your ears may ring whenever they're nearby. Um, also the feeling, you suddenly get this feeling that just overwhelms you. And I would, it's a, it's a intense feeling of love most of the time. And I would just start bawling my eyes out. And that's how I knew that they were nearby. <laughs> like, oh my God, I feel so much love suddenly. It's not like, we don't feel that very often on earth. Um, yeah. I'd, yeah. I'd say the closest thing is like a loved one um, or kind of like the relationship between like a parent and a child that like really, really deep love. So you'll feel that um, sometimes you may get voices. Uh, we began doing telepathic uh communication through in a visual format so they often send me visions and that was something that I worked on uh, practiced to begin to receive that more easily but that's that's a big part of my communication with them is through visions telepathic visions right and did you did that happen simply by you setting the intention and telling them this is how I would like to receive the information or did it start to trickle in and you started to kind of figure out how they were communicating yeah, the, the first time they sent me a vision, it was the first time that I initiated contact with them with the UFO. This golden orb appeared and I had somebody there with me who who was more advanced with they had more experience with spirituality and meditation. I'm completely completely a noob with all of that. And uh so there's this orb that appeared and it started kind of moving around. I was trying to talk with it. And my friend suggested, let's close our eyes and see if we can receive anything that way. So I was like, that kind of sounds weird, but okay. So I did it. And I received an image of a woman with light blue skin. She had no hair. She was gorgeous. And she was wearing almost looked like Star Trek um, outfits. She, they were showing me who this UFO belonged to. They were showing me what they looked like. And then after that, I was like, wow, that's really cool. I want to get more of that. So then I be began practicing. And also they were leading me. Um, it sounds kind of weird, but they would show me the eye a lot. Um, even through like clouds. It's like they would make these clouds that looked like an eye. And eventually I realized, oh, they're saying the third eye, third eye vision, third eye sight. And I began practicing that. And yeah. Oh, that's so cool. Look at my mug. My mug has a third eye on it. Beautiful. I, I found it. it the other day at Goodwill and I was like, that has to be mine. Um, that's so wonderful. And I, I'm, I'm so excited to talk about CE5 and what that is. Um, how did CE5 come into your awareness? How did you learn about it? And what is it just for those who don't know? Yeah, so CE5 is kind of like the technical term for human initiated contact with UFOs and extraterrestrials. So usually, and how it started for me was I, I'd be going out like kind of looking for them, anticipating their arrival, these UFOs, and then they'd kind of just show up. Then I, whenever I discovered CE5, I actually came across it through, um, I kind of, I realized that I was already kind of doing it, but then it kind of put like the the terminology yeah. for it. Um, Dr. St Stephen Greer, he has like a CE5 app and he's really big in that space. So like at that time I was discovering all of this and then I found somebody else who has all of this kind of in more of like the mainstream. So it, I'm like, okay, I'm not going crazy. This is real. <laughs> but yeah, essentially it's just human initiated contact with other dimensional beings and UFOs. So you send out the intention and you invite them and then they come. Which is what I do with mediumship. Honestly, it's 
that's why I'm so struck by the similarity because I, I feel they're all just in other dimensions. You know, that's all it really is. Um, and so when I am going to do a mediumship reading, I do a prayer. I don't even have to do it out loud. I just do it for me where I ask them for what I want. This is what I'm intending. This is what I hope to get. This is what I'd like to do. And this is how I'd like to see things. And um, so I'm also aware that there are also groups of people that do this. I moved to Virginia and it was the first time I'd heard of it. There was a, I went to an intuition development group and she lives on this big farm with acres and acres. And they were going to do a CE5 circle, which I couldn't go to. And I'm about to text her and say, are you going to do this anytime soon? But essentially, I guess if you can just explain what that is when you do it as a group, how does that kind of go down? Yeah. And with a group, it can be very, very powerful whenever you get, you know, more than one person together, set, setting that intention. Basically, you can get together. Um, you can go outside, go to like a stargazing spot. Somewhere that's a little bit more rural is best, but you don't have to. I was making contact in my front yard in a, in the suburbs, Yeah, <laughs> but, but going a little bit more further out could be beneficial and you may want to like sit in a circle or just kind of sit down with each other set the intention together kind of send that out and intention is just so powerful as it is um and then you can meditate you can use crystals to kind of like intensify that and then you just kind of like see what happens but you can also do ce5 indoors through meditation if and you can receive telepathic, I mean, a UFO might not manifest in your home, although some people that does happen. Uh, it could be more of like a telepathic communication or uh, like a visual format. So you can do it outside or inside. Yeah. And I'd love to speak with you about that. And I'm sorry to the people listening who've heard this story over and over, but this is something I wanted to ask you about because I heard you speak about always being drawn to outer space, the stars. And I used to live in, I grew up in Connecticut and at nighttime in the summer, my mom and I would put out lawn chairs and look up at the stars and just stare up at the stars and look for shooting stars and satellites. And sometimes she'd just go back inside and I'd just lay there for an hour and just stare at the sky. And there was something so comforting and familiar about it, which I now understand on such a bigger level. Like, why do I feel so... I mean, everyone's amazed by it, really, I think, if you if you ask them. But I just felt like so comfortable in that space. And around that time, there are two things that happened. I think the UFO happened first, but I was in my mom's bed, in my parents' bedroom, and I was on the phone with my friend, and I looked out the window, and what you described, it wasn't a diamond. This was a triangle, and it was a tripod UFO. I would have thought, again, like I said, I would have attributed it to, oh, it's some government thing or it's a plane or a helicopter, but it was hovering over the woods behind our house and it had a red, blue, and green, if I recall, that's what it, it was, primary colors, lights, but it made zero sound. That's what struck me is there was no sound. And then I was staring at it and I was telling my friend, there's something, there's like this weird thing in the backyard and all of a sudden it just shot up, but it was so, there was no sound, no engine, no nothing. Then a little while later, I went to, for, forgot about that. And then a little while later, was going to bed one night, turned the light off. So I was wide awake. All of a sudden, a bright blue orb. I always do this when I talk about it. I don't know. But just to show you the size of it, it was like this neon blue ball of neon light. And it was like looking at me kind of. It didn't have a face, but it had this Tinkerbell sort of a personality and it was hovering over me. It was zipping back and forth across my room. And I screamed because I didn't know what it was. And it just shot up and disappeared. And I, my mom came running in and she's like, it was probably just, you're just seeing things in the dark. Again, moved on with my life. I didn't give it much thought. I was like 13, 14 or something. It was only later, many years later that I was like, what could that have been? And I looked online. There was nothing like, I was like scientific explanations. There weren't any. We didn't, it was the 90s, the 80s, it was the 80s. We didn't have phones. We didn't have sources of light. So I'd love to hear, well, first of all, your knowledge about what 
what's going on there and also kind of share some of your own stories about that. Because I know that I've seen you speak about now understanding that they were intentionally contacting you. And I suddenly was like, oh my God, were they intentionally contacting me? And I was so clue. I did not realize that. Yeah, it's funny. What I found in like talking to a bunch of other people about this since I've opened up about it and learning through my experience, yes, anytime you see one, it's very intentional. Very intentional. You will never see one by accident. <laughs> you know, that's so cool. Like, yeah, they're not like, oops, you know, they saw me. No, it's on purpose. They're very, very precise. And whenever you see them, they are activating you, they are expanding your awareness. And for star seeds, people who have connection with the stars and these beings, they will often, you'll have some sort of an experience or a sighting, not everybody, but a lot of them. And it's, it's like that kind of gets put in your back pocket until later, whenever more of the story begins to unfold. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's exactly, that's what I wanted to know, because I'm starting to put it all together. And like, Many years have passed since then. Decades have passed. Didn't give it. And you had said too, you weren't giving this stuff a second thought when this started happening to you. Why do you think this happened? I guess, why do you think this happened to you? I know that you identify as a star seed. How do you, um, I guess, yeah. How do you, how do you, how do you know that? How, how does that connect for you? Yeah, well, I didn't know for like the first six months that I was seeing these UFOs. I had no idea what a star seed was, but I knew intuitively, and I know they can also drop ideas on your head um, that they were, they wanted me to share the footage and help bring disclosure. It began to evolve into other things as communication with them ramped up, but I knew that was like, my mission. I knew that this was very, very important. It changes everything. So then after about like six months, seeing them all of the time, recording them, uh, I, I found out what a star seed was and it just hit me. <laughs> yeah. It was yeah. your knowing, right? Yeah, because there th there are star families. We're talk related. about, yeah, we can you talk related. about that? Yeah, we are related to them. Right. And you know, in the mo in a lot of the movies, there's this War of the Worlds theme where they're here to invade, they want to take us over, or people think that they are, but they're really here for peace. I think it's, I just got chills. I don't know why, but I just did. Um, so... I've actually had them. I actually did your meditation right before one of your meditations, right before I came in here. And I've just, I felt so much energy afterwards, which I do every day anyway, to connect with spirit, but uh, there's a very, I've just felt it very strongly. And uh, to the point where I'm like losing my train of thought. That's so interesting when, whenever spirit kind of pops in, I'm, I, it's like, I can't focus on what I'm saying, but um yeah, I, I'm starting to put it all together now, as you did. And are some of us star seeds and some of us not? I guess does it is it sort of like um past life that we had, like we're you know if we were like a Pleiadian or something in in another lifetime, is that what makes us a star seed? Yeah. So having so a star seed is like an older soul. You've had lifetimes in other places. And you, you like you innately carry that wisdom within you. So you may and also extrasensory gifts. So you may be more intuitive or some people have like premonitions or like um, things like that, but they don't think too much of it until it starts really making sense whenever you discover this about yourself. And, and you may feel overwhelmed um, in like crowds of people or uh, felt kind of like the black sheep in your family, all of those things are kind of like common symptoms. It doesn't have to be, but that's what I'm finding a lot. And that's true for me. Um, so past lives, older soul in different star systems, 
I don't believe that everybody on Earth is a star seed in the sense that they've had past lifetimes on other planets and other galaxies, but we're all star seeds on Earth in the sense that we are all genetically related to them. So we have a mixture of different genetics. We, some of the beings look very similar to us, like the Pleiadians, for example. Right. That's so. And how do we, do we just know all of this information because of people like you that have communicated with them? Because I always used to think, you know, I'm pretty spiritual, but when people started talking about Pleiadians and this, I was like, okay, I think you're nuts. I mean, not, I don't know if I really thought they were nuts. I just kind of thought it was a little too out there, but now I'm fully going, oh my God, this is real. <laughs> now I'm understanding it on such a greater level, listening to Matthias um, Stefano and that kind of stuff. I suddenly am going, this sounds so crazy, but it actually makes sense to me now. Like it, it all makes sense to me, which is really amazing. Yeah. No, trust me. Whenever I was first digging into this, it was very like physical um, evidence, like the ma more material world at first. And I avoided, I came across the star seed and in star seed information and stuff like that. I literally avoided it because I'm like, that sounds crazy. Yeah. <laughs> it sounds crazy. Are. Yeah. And um, as I went, it is, it's like, holy crap, it's actually real. And you can find a lot of great information online I was so surprised there's like a whole underground community and you you have to like kind of use your discernment with it if you get if you're reading some of that information and you may get chills or you may get emotional that means it's there's truth to it and it's ringing a bell for you so I yeah would just pay attention to how your body feels and how you feel whenever you read stuff like that's that. so true it's not yeah take take what resonates and I never remember where I was going with it where a lot of movies are about you know they're invading and they're these evil beings and we have to protect ourselves are there beings that do want to take over are there is it just like human beings where some are have malintent some are benevolent um or what is the message that they really want you to impart by showing by sharing the fact that hey we're here what do you, what is it that they actually seem to want mm -hmm. Yeah. So it is, there are, I mean, there are tons of different species. It It is kind of like some of the star systems could be like, like earth. There are some that they're service to themselves or their service to others. Um, I have never had a negative experience and with an extraterrestrial, but I will say in viewing past lives, I have had, um, I have encountered, you know, there, there's there been galactic wars out there too. Um, but the good thing is Earth is part of a really big, really big plan to the, the frequency of the whole galaxy, of the whole universe is raising and there will not be that duality. You know, there's kind of, there's duality in this universe. There's, you know, some good, some bad, um, but a majority of them are very, very positive. They're very benevolent and they're here to help us. It They they have a genetic investment in us. We're like kind of like their children and they care about us a lot. So we're kind of like, they're like mini me. We're just kind of like the, the kids. If you think of it like, yeah, like a kid, like the parents trying to teach them how to walk. That's the relationship with those beings. Um, if they wanted to take us over, it would have happened already. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We wouldn't have known what was coming. So we wouldn't. Yeah. That's really, that's wonderful. It's, it's so comforting to, not that I ever had a fear of them anyway, but it is so comforting to know that really they are love and light beings. Um, I would love to know too, how this has what this has taught you about spirituality and what's going on on the quote unquote other side, like what's going on in this greater universe, the what that we're a part of. I know that's a huge question. <laughs> take it wherever you, you know, however you want to take it. So how this correlates to spirituality? Yeah. Like kind of what are we all doing here? <laughs> Just anything you have in terms of the origin, the nature, why are we here? What are we all a part of and how big does it go? It's pretty big. There's a lot of eyes on earth right now. 
um yeah it's kind of like earth what what's going on here raising into a completely high we're raising into a higher dimension i don't think it's ever been done like this before yeah in the universe so it's a really really big deal and a lot of us volunteered to come here to raise the frequency and in doing that we had to go through a veil of forgetfulness where we forgot our past lives in our history and we bring our own light we bring unique energy from these different places if you, i mean look at what's going on in the world it's it's chaos all of these we're here to collapse the old ways and create something new and help bring peace and unity and all of that so it's a really really big deal and we're here at a very very pivotal pivotal point that's been prophesized for thousands of years so yeah it's a big deal <laughs> yeah you, yeah you answered that beautifully and very succinctly I, I like that i i have heard that from many people who've had near-death experiences who have had premonitions and that sort of thing um I also when will I will also have this isn't I have more questions, but just wanted to mention at this point in the in the conversation that if anyone wants to see the photographs that Lily has taken, they're all on her website. Um, what's the name of the website again? LilyNovaSpaceArt.com. Okay. Yes. And you can you can go there. There's a lot on there that you can on YouTube as well. You have a YouTube channel, which is Lily Nova Starseed. Um, and I was just deep diving into all that and can't wait to watch all the videos. Um, you also mentioned having your father visit you, which I love. How I would love to hear if you're if you're comfortable sharing about that. Um, just because I assume this happened sort of after this discovery, after everything sort of opened up for you and how did you perceive him and know it was him and how did he communicate with you? So it started coming as like signs. Yeah. And this is also like the universe, like teaching me that the, we live in an intelligent universe. You can communicate with spirit all the time. Um, our loved ones exist in a place where time, they don't experience it linearly like we do. It, and it's hard for us to comprehend because we're in like this 3D, we're experiencing reality this way, but it's just so much more. Um, so it started as signs. The first one, for example, I saw a, a red cardinal and it was like kind of obnoxious. Like, I was like, oh, that's interesting didn't think too, too much of it. The next day I was on a walk. I saw another one like really close to me and I was like, okay, that has to mean something. I look up the meaning in the meaning of red cardinals. It mentions that past loved ones can are um, known to come as cardinals. And I was like, oh, I don't think my dad would come see me. So I figured it meant something else. And then like a bunch of other things happened. There was like a shooting star. Um, and finally he was trying to get my attention. <laughs> yeah. For, for days and then finally while I was out stargazing and I got this shooting star like it just it's just the knowing took over my took over my mind and body and I was like oh my god it's him yeah, yeah. it's beautiful it, it is beautiful when that happens I know um that's do you get I, I wonder how too how you receive it do you get physical sensations when you're being contacted um, by, I mean, I know that you said the love feeling, but I get these tactile sensations of tingles all over my body. Actually, it's always on the right side for some reason. I don't know why, um, except that I did a reading last night where this woman's father came and he was right on my left side, just sort of, it feels like somebody's touching my head or like playing with my hair. Uh, have you ever had anything like that where it's a physical sensation of presence? Mm -hmm. For me, it, it's not, it doesn't, come as much as a physical sensation for me it's very but in learning about in talking to other people it comes in such a variety of ways big big variety some people they do get um they feel something on this side or that side phys very physical for me it's very like visual so I'll see signs a lot it's it sounds <laughs> kind of weird but say I'm I'm talking to spirit and I'm looking at a tree suddenly as I'm looking at this tree I'll see a heart just like instantly um and then you know I'll 
there will also be kind of like a, an intuitive telepathic communication that comes with it. So it's very visual for me. Um, and while I'm looking at the same tree, it can be a heart one second, it can be an eye, just kind of like signs that mean something. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's very visual for me and then kind of like a feeling in my gut and then also clear cognizance where it's just like a sudden knowing, like yeah. there's, no, there's no doubt about it. So there's all different kinds of ways that it can come, but that's how it comes for me. Yeah. Thanks for sharing that. Um, I also would love to know when you had mentioned, I've heard you mention that you, when this first started to happen, first you step outside and you see this craft outside of your your home and then you started to intentionally seek them out and take photos as they arrived and then one day you even saw them during the daytime and there is footage of that on your uh on your website as well or on youtube i forget maybe both um where it comes in the in the daytime these days now that this is part of your life is this something that you actively seek out or have you kind of let is the magic still there for you where you're like i want to keep doing this or does it just sort of happen organically now as you're going through your life and how often does it happen? Yeah. Well, I worked very, very closely with them for, they were, I felt them at one point it was like 24 seven. I felt like they were in my head with me. Yeah. <laughs> so, and I've had other people reach out to me. They're like, I'm seeing UFOs and I think it feels like they're in my head. <laughs> yeah. It, so, you know, just, just in case you're not going crazy you're if anybody else experiences that. Um, so yeah, daily, daily. And I was making contacts daily. Yeah, at first it was very like UFO capturing the footage, physical. Now it's more like um, through vis visual meditation and while, you know, I'm just like randomly walking through the house and then I'll just get, okay, they're here or, you know, they're saying something. Um, so yeah, it's, it's basically daily. Um, the past like six months to a year, I've been focusing very much on, and they've been teaching me kind of like Reiki uh, healing and, and DNA activation. So the live activations, I was doing them every Sunday at, uh, on my YouTube channel to help people connect and also doing energy work. So it's become very much like about that. But um, yes, making contact every day and I'm, I'm feeling called to go out and getting more footage. So I'm excited for that. I'll be posting that soon on my YouTube channel also, because even the footage, just seeing them, there's frequencies in it that activates you. That's what I was going to ask you next. That's really cool. Is there, well, okay, let's talk about what is, what DNA activation is, what does it mean? And why do we, why, why is it a benefit to us? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this is one of the first things that the star beings started telling me and I learned more as I go. They kind of would give me like hints as I went. They started showing me DNA in the clouds, like strands of DNA. And I was like, okay. And, you know, kind of like a, the claircognizant telepathic communication would be developing like, okay, they're telling me there's something very important about our DNA. There's something special about our DNA. And as I went and as I developed my ability to receive visions from them and in, in telepathic communication. So our DNA, DNA and also looking from a scientific standpoint, scientists say that 95 to 97% of our DNA is junk DNA. It is, it appears to be dormant. It doesn't appear to be doing anything. And that's like far from the case. Nature doesn't do anything by accident. They're like, everything is made perfectly, really. Um, so with the star beings, they began teaching me and helping me to activate my DNA. I would see like the Pleiadians and then they would show me vision of this, my DNA lighting up and, and I began meditating with them and they said, we're activating your DNA. And as I spent time doing that and focusing on that, my psychic abilities began to develop, began to get very strong. My healing abilities, just like with the live activations, I have people who email me all of these crazy stories, the effects. And that's what happens whenever you begin to activate your DNA. You begin to manipulate reality a lot easier. You develop healing abilities. You develop psychic abilities. Your awareness expands. Your consciousness expands. Life becomes more magical. You, you are able to manifest faster. You become more intuitive and you can access more of this wisdom. So 
So we're functioning on a very, very small portion of our brain in a very small portion of our DNA. We can basically become superheroes with, you know, all of the, you know, society's obsession with superheroes. It's not by accident. Like that's, that's disclosure. We can do amazing, amazing things as we activate. So that's a big part of why they're here and, and what they're helping us do is to activate so that we can, and we'll also become closer to the spiritual, spiritual realm, become more divine and just be able to, to reach our potential, our highest potential as we go. Yeah. As you were speaking, I literally just saw your aura and it's glowing bright blue. It was, it was so cool. I usually don't see it in blue and I, I was watching you and all of a sudden it just started going like this. It was really cool. Um, I know because you've talked a lot about telekinesis as well. These, these superpowers that we have, these psychic powers. Can you tell us a little bit about, or a lot about whatever you want to say about telekinesis, how you discovered you could do it, how it works, anything you'd like to say about that and what yeah. it is. So, so at first I thought, okay, that's a little far-fetched. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And telekinesis is just moving things with your mind. And, uh, you know, you see things about that. There's movies about that. And the government was testing that. And like, I don't know what year, 60s, 70s, 80s, there's like these top secret programs where they were teaching people psychic abilities, exploring that, um, like a MK Ultra, uh, Stranger Things, the series, like that stuff really happened. They were teaching yeah. people, you know, experience yeah. people to see what their mind could do. And um, yeah, I discovered, so I had some Andromedan beings who were working with me and that's that's what they told me they were helping me to do helping me to do telekinesis with like moving with the live activations I do the activations that I do moving energy with my mind and with my intention and then I also began to experiment on physical objects I made there's a, like a two minute clip on my YouTube channel that you can practice with but it's like a a needle um, a post-it note and you stick it in an eraser and you just focus on it relax but focus on it and practice doing that and you can actually make it move um so yeah that's that's something we can actually do which is pretty nuts yeah i watched that video it was really cool it's really interesting and what i i what am i asking you here <laughs> so many things um yeah what do you think this communication with other beings, it's, it feels like it's becoming more commonplace. And it, I don't know if it's just because of awareness or why do you think that's happening in terms of, I know you said we're kind of having this awakening. I don't, I didn't know if it was just because I'm having an awakening. So I'm just seeing it where it is kind of thing. But why do you think, like, I just delve a little bit more into that. What's really happening here? Because right now it seems like, with COVID and uh, Russia and Ukraine and, uh, you know, all of this stuff, racism, anti-Semitism, all this stuff coming to a big head. And not that that stuff hasn't always existed, but it just feels like in our modern world, we're like, what is happening here? What it, What is happening here? As far as you know. Good question. So basically, these kind of lower vibrational things, negative things, that have been going on on earth and they've been happening there's been messed up things going on on earth for a very long time they used to burn women as witches like mm -hmm. women who were interested in science and healing with uh with herbs they would burn these people alive <laughs> like yeah millions of people so we've done a lot of kind of crazy things um especially with like organized religion, there's been a lot of manipulation there. And there's actually been a lot of what I've discovered more recently, the empowering information and the information about, you know, the kingdom of heaven being within our unlimited potential. A lot of that was actually taken out of the Bible, which is pretty crazy. So it was like already there, like everything was already given to us. Uh, there was just 
corruption that hit all these things. So basically what's happening is all of these things are coming up to the surface to be made aware of. And a lot of people have gotten comfortable with, you know, just how, how the world is. We're used to it. Um, but that's not like, it's very, very, it's very poor. We don't need to have all of this poverty, all of this suffering, all of this, these mental health issues, all of these chemicals in our food and, in uh, you know, all of these diseases that are preventable. We don't need to have all that stuff. So basically all of these things are coming to a head to be made aware of. And also until people finally take a stand and they're like, okay, this, this is done. It's going to get as crazy as it needs to for people to realize like they can't ignore it any longer. And at the same time, uh, COVID marked just a huge, huge shift because then UFOs became in, in the media, they started showing themselves more. So at the same time, while all of this craziness is going on, which I wouldn't watch, don't feed into the news. <laughs> um, you know, I have no doubts in my mind that this this is just a part of the process and there's going to be some turbulence, but where we're going is going to be so, so, so beautiful. So don't worry. But while that's happening, more and more people are having these UFO in contact experiences. They're beginning to awaken and remember. That's what the star beings kept telling me. Remember, remember. They're like, we've known you for a very long time. Yeah. I was going to ask you too about the kinds of messages, because you said basically now it's just sort of commonplace thing that happens to you all day, every day, throughout your day. And I'm sure you're also present in your life and doing other things. What is the main thing that they communicate to you or what, why do they, the messages that they give you, why are they giving them to you on a day-to-day -day basis? I would just like to hear maybe a theme. What's the theme? What do they want you to know? Why, what are they telling you every day? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so very much in the beginning, it was about they started teaching me about the chakras, um, meditation also helping me to kind of like to master my mind, um, develop my consciousness, uh, frequencies, teaching me spirituality, like we are all one. Also, time is an illusion. Yeah, <laughs> all of these just mind bending things. So that was kind of like building a foundation. And then they started showing me like my past lifetimes, um, teaching me how to develop psychic abilities. They would show me like the, began showing me the history of earth that the star beings have actually been here for a very long time. They've been helping humanity for thousands of years. So they're kind of teaching me like the, the our real history and more recently, it's been very much, and also the DNA activation teaching me about that. I've kind of gotten the crash course in a lot of things. And also I call it Starseed Bootcamp, where I've been doing a lot of inner work and working through a lot of things at the same time. And so more recently, it has been, it's like they're with me every day, helping me to become a master, helping me to be, to reach self-actualization helping me to develop my gifts and abilities, helping me to develop my healing abilities. So it's like they're there each day guiding me. And then other times they'll give me information. Uh, it's just kind of, it can be kind of sporadic, but that's been the main yeah. focus. Yeah, is, is guiding me on how I can become my best, my highest potential and helping me to help others get there as well. Yeah, that's so, that's beautiful. Uh, have you ever had a past life regression or do you just get these downloads about your own past? And either way, I'd love to know what you've learned from about who you are or who you have been and what those lives are here to teach us, I guess, or teach you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I've had two spontaneous past life regressions. I've never like actually three. I just had another one recently. It, I never went to go see somebody to do this. There was one night where I think it was the first one I had, I was working through some emotions, you know, trauma things coming up. I, I went out on like a jog. Um, as I was like walking, the, the Syrians contacted me. So as I'm walking, just that sudden claircognizance Syrians. That's, and, yeah. and then 
they said, they basically said there's a past life that's still affecting you. And if you want to get to the next level, you've got to become aware of this. Then whoosh, just suddenly I was like back in medieval times. Um, wow. so this, yeah, this was an earth life. And I saw myself burning at the stake as a witch. And I suddenly like felt all of the emotion from it and just like started like bawling <laughs> there in and, and I realized that's where a lot of issues with my throat chakra uh issues in standing up for myself and speaking my truth and not being afraid to show who I am that's where a lot of it stemmed from so in sharing this online because it can be scary especially yeah. talking about these kinds of topics like this is revolutionary we're changing the world here <laughs> yeah it's, it's and something. people think we're a lot of people think we're nuts I mean they or they don't like it or it offends them right yeah and believe me like I I thought it was crazy at first too but no it's real it's real I um, did too that's why I like to say that on the on the podcast and I like it to be accessible to all people because I I think it's difficult to start launching into all of this like hi I'm so-and-so and I channel the Pleiadians and blah because I think then people just tune right out including myself where it's like but I don't understand but you have to start let's start slow here and let's also be very clear that I'm a natural skeptic I want the scientific evidence I wasn't always spiritual and a lot of my guests weren't either and that's why I always like to have people like you that are so grounded and just average and approachable. And you can, I can tell that you're very mentally sane and very articulate and grounded. And I think that helps deliver a message that even if you're not sure about it, at least you're going, well, it's, I might open my mind to it. Um, and, and at least I'm just willing to listen and, and digest it and, and, and not feel like someone's talking way over my head. And the other question I had, is you talked about uh, the, the message of really uh, living up to your full potential and power, I guess, for lack of better words. Uh, you mentioned, because I'm I'm also really into manifestation. And I have, I've heard various things about manifesting and what that really means. You know, I think, um, is it Matthias? Is that how he pronounces his name? He kind of says, well, manifestation isn't exactly what you think. But I do find that things are starting to happen the way I write. It's almost like I'm writing my own screenplay it doesn't necessarily all come together the way that I thought it was going to, or in the timing that I wanted it to. But as I look back, I start to say, I manifested this and this and this and this. So I just want to hear your thoughts on manifestation, what you've learned about it and what does it really mean? Yeah. So even like in the beginning, as I was seeing these UFOs a lot, um, and just, just starting to communicate with them, they started teaching me manifestation. Oh, cool. Yeah, I was like, this is so, like, what? Yeah. <laughs> so teaching me manifestation, like the law of attraction, because it's how the universe actually works. Mm -hmm. Because it's, it really is. It's all vibration. And science even knows this. It's all, everything is vibration. At the very smallest level, we are waves of vibration which also like almost made me like pass out whenever I first found <laughs> out. Cause I'm like, that's kind of, sounds kind of scary. That's crazy. <laughs> like at the smallest level, we're little waves of vibration. It's really mind bending. Um, so they began teaching me that. So how they would do, I'll just give like a quick example. I was out stargazing one night and, you know, then I would see, I saw like a light. I would, I saw them there or no, before, before that I was like, all right, you know, star family, you know, where are you? I'm here. And then would start like looking for them. And usually it'd be like at the time, they'd be right there like instantly and uh, nothing. So then I started getting kind of bummed out and, and kind of like upset, like, like in a state of kind of lack, like I really want to see them in disappointment. And then finally, like I, I started doing something else, started paying attention to something else, forgot about it. As soon as I got my mind off of that, next time I looked up, boom, they were right there. And I got the message, see, you can't want it too bad or you're pushing it away from you. Yep. That's so true. 
That is so true. It's really part of manifestation. Just talking about this with a friend today, you know, her, her she want you know, her, her ex-boyfriend, she's like, he, he, I, I need him to come back to me, you know, like I need him to come back. And I said, and, and she gets all this stuff really well. Um, but I was saying, here's the thing. Part of manifestation is letting go. It's not saying I don't want him to come back. It's not, it's just kind of, I said, just right now, be present in today, love the one you're with, which is yourself, whoever, you know, you're dating the people in your life, focus on that. You can still manifest intend that we will be together again. We will be together, but it's also, you have to be present in this world, in this life and really love yourself, like yourself, immerse yourself in all of the things that bring you to life anyway for your own self. Um, so it's, I have found that to be true too. Like the less emotion I put behind it, the less like, oh, but I just want this. It really starts to flow like anything. I think if you struggle against the current, you're fighting against the current and you're not in the flow. Mm -hmm. But how much, how, see, now here's a question I have for you, just your, whatever you think, I'm not, I know that you may not have all the answers, but I have recently been thinking I really would like to start coaching manifestation because I'm passionate about it. It's all I listen to. It's all I, th I do it every day. But my question is, I'm just curious, your your opinion. Then it kind of goes a little bit, of, there's a little bit of a conflict between things happening in divine timing or that are in your highest and best good. Because what if you're manifesting um, somebody that you have a crush on, let's say, and you're manifesting that they're your partner. But what you don't know is that that person actually is a sociopath, you know, and would actually hurt you or harm you. But forget the circumstance. It could be even lower level. It doesn't have to be that dangerous. What, how do manifestation and, I don't know, divine intervention, your spirit guides, how does that all kind of work together to your knowledge and understanding? Mm -hmm. So following like the signs and synchronicity is really big. You can ask the universe for um for clarification and anybody can do this yeah. anybody can ask if you ask for a sign something's going to happen if you're open to it and you ask for a sign you just have to pay attention so really learning how to pay attention and yeah i found that everything is happening in divine timing if something's not quite going your way that's because something better's going to come along but one of the other biggest things that they have taught me is inspired action if you are really like inspired to do something like it just automatically excites you that's the spirit working through you that's where which direction you're supposed to go yeah I like that too I think what you desire desires you mm -hmm. and there is that what you wouldn't be desiring it so badly unless it was meant for you in some way even if it's a life lesson it, it may be that maybe you need that sociopath in your life for a minute to yeah. teach you something for earth school. I mean, it, it, it may not be the person you're going to marry. It just might be, you can manifest it and it may not go well, but you're still on your path because there's something drawing you to that person in the first place. And I always say the worst things that have ever happened to me are the, some of the best things for me. They helped me grow. They helped me confront things. They helped me realize that I had more work to do. So yeah, I got what I asked for. It hurt, but in the end, I've realized recently that, oh yeah, I manifested that, you know? And I just, I was remembering, like, I had this big crush on this, I'm going to say rock star. He wasn't like a rock star, but you know, he's like a successful musician, didn't know I existed. And then I would stalk him online. I'd just be like, if he only knew me, if he just only knew me, then I know we would be together, but he's in an, he has a girlfriend and I was in a relationship too. And and I didn't know how it would happen. But then one day I, he was local. So it wasn't like, you know, I ran into him at an airport or something. And he came right up to me and was like, I have to know you. And I went, it's happening. I've manifested it. He's the person. Well, it turned out, you know, he was a real Jerk. juggler of women, like a real juggler of women, had lots and lots and lots of women and was like, I love you, but I also love 30 other people. And I went through that whole relationship anyway. And I needed to go through it. And I think, and but looking back now, I've gone, oh, wait a second. I manifested it. I stalked him every day. I listened to his music. I was like, if he only knew me. And the second he met me, he's like, I need to know who you are. And that's a manifestation that didn't go the way that I had fantasized, but it 
I still manifested it and I don't regret it because it was really important. And a lot of beautiful things came out of that relationship, um, including one of his other girlfriends and I are now like sisters after 15 years. I mean, it's like, we're still tight. So I think when we manifest, we think I want it to go this way, or I want to have this mansion and I want to live in this place. And you might get it and it might not be exactly the way you thought, but you still can create it, bring it into your reality. So I love the way that you put that. Um, after all of, after everything that you've been going through and continue to learn, what is it that you want people to know? Well, nothing happens by accident. <laughs> it's especially whenever you begin coming across this information or coming across things, like looking back, even on my on my life and everything has happened for a reason it in as you begin awakening to the spiritual side or just how the reality how the universe really is and expanding your mind you realize oh my god it's a lot deeper than you'd expect so just pay attention. What I'm trying to say is pay attention whenever something like a book may be put in front of you or you may see this this the first video on your YouTube, the universe is communicating with you, especially if you ask. So so trust in in the guidance that the universe is giving you. And also, we all have star families. And these beings love us very 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 much. We all have at least probably anybody watching this has a star family, has has star origins. Um, you can connect with them spiritually. And, and I have a ton of activations on my channel and videos if anybody is interested in, in learning more about that in, in meditations and things like that. And also, <laughs> another part, we are very, very unlimited and very, very powerful, very powerful. The next few years are going to be very, very, very big. The world is getting flipped upside down. Um, and we're beginning to discover who we truly are and what it truly means to be human. And it's actually, it, it seems chaotic, but it's going to be something very, 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 very beautiful. And yeah, so if there's anything that you feel called to, inspired to do, like like follow that, follow your bliss. That's one of the biggest things that source and the star beings have taught me. I was like, what's the, what's the like most important thing I could be doing right now? Follow your bliss. I'm like, that's it. That's so simple. But really like you're, you're going in the right direction. If you do what makes you happy and inspires you. That's beautiful, Lily. I love how succinct and eloquent you are. And I appreciate you showing up today and bringing your warm energy, your insight, your groundedness to this conversation and to really making it accessible, speaking in terms I think we most humans can relate with. So I uh, wanted to talk about the fact that you will be teaching some classes, having workshops coming up. You can look on, on Lily's website. Is there anything else that you wanted to share? Um, I was going to ask how people can do CE5, but you can find that on, on your YouTube channel. I'm doing, there are all kinds of meditations you can do. There are videos, Dr. Stephen Greer's channel is really good too. Anything else that you'd like to share about what you're doing, what you have to offer, or anything else that you find that you'd like to uh, share? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm really excited. I'm starting group sessions. Awesome. Um, yeah, with the assistance of the star beings helping to kind of like channel that energy. So it's very powerful healing and activating. Um, I'll be focusing on helping people to develop their gifts and also to activate their highest potential there's on my if you go to my youtube channel lily nova starseed and click on any of the videos there is in the description it says sign up for email list to be notified if you are interested because i'll have upcoming uh workshops on how to make contact ce5 how to develop your psychic abilities and also group like healing sessions and things like that so I'll be sending out an email notification whenever those are available and also DNA activation kits. So that's what I'm working on right now. I really want to focus on like group events. Uh, we have a great community on my channel. I have plenty of activations, meditations that are on there. And I do have a video 
uh, called How to Make Contact with UFOs slash CE5 and my CE5 story, and it dives into my exact process. So if you're interested in- Awesome. Thank you so much, Lily, for the work you're doing. I'm really excited for you. I can't wait to see what you do. I'll be following you and we'll be in touch. Thanks again. What a pleasure. Thank you for having me. Take care. You too.